friends, or maybe more. Earn a 20 quid free bet for every friend you refer to Paddy Power, thanks to our Friends with Benefits programme. Log in to your Paddy Power account and share your referral link to get started. Terms and conditions apply. 18 plus, begambleaware.org. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Royal Ascot for this Racing Post postcast. Looking ahead to day three of the world's most famous flat meeting, Royal Ascot. Joining myself, Lee Motter said we have my Racing Post colleagues, Tom Siegel and David Jennings. And on my right from Paddy Power, Mr. Paul Binfield, who is sporting a stunning tie, Benis. Talk about your tie. Well, I just thought we'd liven up these postcasts, Lee. You know, some people, some some of my colleagues have, have accused me of being extremely boring on these sort of they things. They have. So they have. And uh, so we've added a bit of colour just to make this more exciting. Marvellous. Has and it worked, Motti? What do you think? Well, no, I, I, no, I think it's, yeah, reminds me of Bold Sweet. So That's lots it. of, like a licorice all sort of thing. That's it. it. Yeah. Okay. It's, yeah, yeah, very nice. Anyway, um, the first race on day three is the Norfolk Stakes at 2.30 for two-year-olds. Uh, not quite as big a field as some of the two-year-old races here this week, which have been filling up uh, this one. 15 declared runners, and of those 15, Benes, who is favourite? We make Sunday Sovereign favourite, um, Lee 5-2 to two favourite. Then we go 11-2 to Maven, 13-2 to two King Neptune. 7A Alley, 10 Expressionist, Venture Rebel, Venture Rebel, and it's 12 to 1 bar. And Tom, this looks a slightly easier race than some of the other two year old contests. Well, it'll hopefully be easier because we won't have 27 right across the track. We'll only have 15, so hopefully they'll all come up in the middle so they won't, we won't have to worry about which side you're drawn on, stuff like that. The obvious favourite is the Irish or Sunday Sovereign. You know, he is Sunday Sovereign, isn't it? That's the right one, yeah. Yes. <laughs> That's the right one. I'm so good at your right. Irish horses to think of. Good start. Uh, and uh, he was really impressive, wasn't he? At, yeah. Where was he? Seven Tipperary. Lengths? Tipperary yeah. last time, and it was soft ground. Time was good. Uh, Everything's right from the only thing is he's going to get taken on today. There's an American horse in there. There's Mark Johnson's horse, Misty Gray, that uh, sprinted off in the Woodcock at Epsom. Probably won't be an issue, but it's a different it's a different kettle of fish for him. And he's what nine to four? Did you say Paul five to two? Uh, five to two, five Tom. To two. And I think that's plenty short enough in any Norfolk. Come you're up against really well-bred horses from the top yards. DJ, how well regarded is he? Very well regarded. Um, he was bought obviously um, after winning his maiden at Takura, beaten first time out, stepped forward significantly to win at Takura. Was visually very impressive, and went to Tipperary and just glided across the ground. I spoke to Paddy Toomey for the previews this morning. If people don't know Paddy Toomey. He is the next big thing. Like, yeah. He really is. He's a young trainer, very, very smart, very shrewd, and the, the people I would hold in high regard rank him very highly, mm. really highly. So he is the next real deal. I uh, spoke to him this morning, delighted with the horse. I said it's, it's obviously good that he handles soft ground at Tipperary. He said the ground is no, no barrier to him whatsoever. He handles every sort of ground. The fact that he won on soft is obviously a, a big help. The only problem, as Tom said, is the price. Do you know, he's 5-2 to two to win a, a race where there's so many unexposed juveniles in here. And the one I thought was a little bit of value is Al Ali that was beaten first time out of Ripon. Now, he's by Society Rock, who obviously won the, it was the Golden Jubilee it was called that year, that's a, a Society Rock one. So he should cope fine with the ground. I thought he travelled like a really good horse that day at Ripon, really, really good. He was beaten by a horse called Spartan Fighter, um, who had previous form in a maiden that worked out really well. I'd say if them two horses ran against each other again, I have no doubt that Al Ali had beat him every time. Uh, Frankie is booked. I think he'll handle the ground. Um, and to me, at around about 8-1, to one, I think, Paul, I think he's... Yep, 7-1, Dave. 7-1. Seven seven. To I, I'd prefer to back him each way at 7-1 to one than back Sunday Sovereign, but Sunday Sovereign is the right favourite. I've got a bit of information on him for you, for your Motti, and Go it's on. good. He's Go going to like it. Go he's, on, I'm going to help him out Go here. On. A friend of mine, James Willoughby, helped buy it. He's, 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 he's involved in the timing of Breeze Up horses. Yeah. And so... The vibes are that it's working really well. And the, the Racing Post top speed figure yeah. for that horse is off the charts good. The Ripon race is one of the fastest juvenile races run this season. It got a, it got a speed figure in the hundreds for a first time out. He was beaten, but he's, it was, that was over six. He's back over five now, mm. which I think will suit him. He was in the outside at Ripon, and the winner was on the rail. And I know for a fact that the trainer of the winner, think Declan Carroll, thinks that his winner, Street Fighter, is as good as Santry, who has nearly won the... Was it this race here a couple of years ago, or the Windsor Castle, yeah. one of the races here a year Nine ago? Nine lengths back to the third. And nine lengths back to the third. So that is a good shout. The only thing I'd say is whether he'll be conditioned well enough to win. I like, I like two rolls with experience. I really do. I think it's a massive, massive difference. I think if Arizona hadn't had that extra run yesterday, he wouldn't have won. Mm. I think if Threat had had a run yesterday, an extra run, he would have won. I think, I think having experience is a good, as a really strong factor at uh, Royal That's Ascot. why you back more winners than me. You have more experience. <laughs> well... 
Yes, that's true. Well, I'm older than you. That, may, that means I've got more experience. It's true. But uh, so I would, I'd think Sunday Sovereign is definitely the one to be. I do like Al Ali, and I would throw in a good word for Aiden's. Well, I don't know if it's his second string. It might be his first string. Mount Fuji. Yeah, Ryan rides him. Yeah. Ryan rides him. He's by Dark Angel. Lots of top sprinters by Dark Angel. Most of them like soft ground. Batash being the, probably the best example. Uh, he's he's a half brother to a Group One winning two-year-old. Uh, he was. The, you, you can't back him on form. Mm. And he's a bit like Al Ali. Is I think he might be caught out by through inexperience because he's only had the one run and it wasn't a great run. I mean, he, he scrambled home from. He did remarkably well to win he though. Did, he traded did. huge on Betfair, huge, right. and got and, up to win. Yeah, and he finished well. And it just it is just the fact that they are running him in a race that they've won twice before in the last four years. The difference is the ones they've won it with, Sioux Nation and Waterloo Bridge, had had four runs mm. each. Yeah. They'd had the experience. He doesn't, so he might be caught out by that, which maybe is the reason why the other O'Brien horse is a little bit shorter in the market, because I think he's had three runs and might be conditioned a little bit better. But the fact that Ryan's riding him, I think, is a pointer in his direction. OK, um, Benito wins the race. Unfortunately, the lads have stolen my thunder. Yeah. Just to prove it to you, though, look, at, at Al Ali, so I, I also went for him. Um, You've also written four places. Four places, Lee. Absolutely, I forgot to mention that. Top very PR, well backed. Top PR. What was that relationship? Very well backed. Yeah, it was twelve to one on Monday. So right. I think Tom Segal and James Willoughby and all that, all, all, all their chums are on board. Um, but very well backed, and um, so same selection as the boys. Lovely handwriting as well. Yeah, I know. Gorgeous. Um, the second race on day two is the Hampton Court Stakes. Binners, the prices. Four places, Lee. Um, five Cape of Good Hope, Fox Chairman, we can't separate those two. No. Six Headman, seven King Ottica, Roseman and Sangarius, and it's ten to one the rest. Lovely, lovely. Um, David Jennings, your first time working at Royal Ascot this week yeah. in this lovely one. part of the country. To me he's got one in well, yeah, before we get on to that, oh, don't, right. don't, don't, don't steal me thunder. So I thought you were going there. No, 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 I'm in charge. Where he's going no, 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 no. no. So worrying. you didn't quite get to say in Hampton Court, you stayed in Slough. Yeah. Yes, like, how was your first experience of Sly, or as I say around here, Sly? Yeah, Sly. I, well, I'm staying in this apartment block, mm. and when I walked in, uh, there was like uh, c cans of coke on the ground and cigarette butts and all this, and I was going, Inside. this is going to be absolutely horrible. And my lovely other half, Aoife, is coming over Friday night, and I'm going, she's staying here. And now she's not high maintenance, but she uh -huh. just does like cleansiness. Well, she just do, yeah, absolutely. Sanitize so all I can think of walking up the stairs to the second floor is, oh my God, I'm going to have to book somewhere else for Friday and yeah. Saturday night. Travel lodge. Whoa, open the door. Unbelievable. Yeah. Beautiful. Gorgeous. Really clean. There was a throw on the bed. There was no. two lockers. It was absolutely gorgeous. Now like 7.5 out of 10, but it was just a walk up to the room. Yeah. Like meant it was a massive the surprise. Office. Was in the office in Yeah, Slough, it was, yeah. It? Myself yeah, and Ricky. Yeah, yeah. Well, that yeah. was a nice diversion. And yeah. who wins at Hampton Court? Uh, this is my strongest fancy of the daily. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I fancy Roseman here for um, Roger Varian, who won the last race on Tuesday. This Roseman, I think, is a very, very good horse. Um, he was third to raise you on his debut. Obviously, raise you has franked that form since. Um, now, he was second to King of Comedy last time at Sandown, okay? King of Comedy ran a cracker in the St. James's Palace Stakes. But the key thing was here and um, he tried to make the running and he just kept getting taken on the whole way by walking the sand now I mean the two of them went lickety split the whole way one went on front the other one went on front and I watched the race thinking to myself if this Roseman can stay within the first four mm. he's a hell of a horse because he needs further it was over a mile he, he managed to fight back against King of Comedy and finish second, a clear second. And I said to myself, when he gets a bit of cut in the ground, when he steps up to a mile and a quarter, he will win a, a really big race. And this is the race I was hoping he'd run in. Um, I think he's crying out for the trip. And the draw is a little bit of a worry. He's drawn out quite wide. But I think we haven't even near seen the best of Roseman yet. He was very impressive when he won his maiden. He'll handle cutting the ground. He's handled it already. I think the ground will be perfect for him. I'd be very disappointed if he doesn't win. He's made a good case, hasn't he? He has. Very well. We should have him back again. Should we get him over? More? You'll, you'll be him when he turns up. He didn't turn up yesterday, did he? <laughs> to be fair, he, he, list, views on it. he did come from Kilbegan on Monday night. No one ever from the Racing Post has completed the Kilbegan Kill Ascot double. Than it did from Kill Began, judging by the traffic yesterday. <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, I, uh, in my defence, uh, we were on the runway for quite a while trying to get off the plane. So mm. put that in your pipe and smoke a binners. <laughs> Uh, quite, well, obviously he's made a very good case for Roseman. I am worried about the draw. I think it's really hard. If there's a if there's a if there's a draw advantage at this meeting, I always think it's in the ten furlong races. I think being drawn out wide is a big negative because mm. I think they get on the turn quite quickly. You have to use up a lot of energy. Having said that, yesterday the two winners on the round course came wide, 
if you notice the Dave and uh, the Grand Vizier, they both finished wide and yeah. Ryan Moore's horse that finished strongly in the... I'm wondering whether you don't want to be on that rail on the far side. That's the, that's the sort of, I know Circus Maximus one up there, but he sort of edged out to the cross. If you remember, King of Comedy was the finisher up the middle. Yeah. I wonder whether it might be better being up the, up the middle. So therefore, I'm not as worried about the draw as I would be. So, so David makes a very good case. I think, look, Aidan O'Brien's won every single staying three-year-old Colts race I can think of by the French Derby. And the one he runs here is, and the, and the Dante, he didn't win the Dante, did he? But uh, he's won all the others, and he's running Cape of Good Hope here, who I thought ran a cracker in the French mm. Derby. I think the French Derby is a really good run. I think it's better than our Derby. Right. No, I don't think Cape of Good Hope is as good as the Aidan O'Brien horses that run in the Derby. Otherwise, he'd have been running in the Derby, if you see what I mean. Yeah, yeah. But I think it's a good piece of form. I don't think he'll mind the ground. I think 12 furlongs, uh, 10 furlongs is perfect for him. I know he's the favourite, but I think it's 11 to 2, was he, did you say? Um, I said five to one joint favourite. Five to one joint favourite. I think that's a perfectly reasonable price. And I know Sylvester D'Souza thinks Fox Chairman is the best horse he rides. He thinks well, he's better than Bangkok. He thinks he's better than all of them. He's really, really sweet on him. He was desperately unlucky behind Circus Maximus yesterday's winner. Yeah. Uh, in the actually, it's Tuesday's Chester. winner, isn't it? Tuesday. Tuesday's winner before we get yeah. wrong. Yeah. This it's, is Wednesday, though. <laughs> yeah. When we're talking. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, in the uh, Chester D stakes. Yeah. D stakes. He got no I run at all, and he thinks he's a really, really good horse. So I think I think for once, Binner's boys have got this spot on. I think those are the two to beat. But I'm going to go back and have a look at another look at Roseman now. Well, as a little aside, um, I was um, a guest on Look on Sunday, on Sunday when I was sat next to Sheen Murphy, who was asked for his best bet of Royal Ascot, really? having tipped Bacchus last year, who yeah. won the Wokeham, and he said he'd been down to Andrew Baldings, ridden out Fox Chairman, loved the way he went, and that was his nap of the meeting. So go, that must that must fill you with confidence. Yeah, absolutely. Too. Yeah, yeah. It Won't be so. Roseman, will he? You've got a little. Uh, hopefully not. You've got a lovely <laughs> smile, haven't you? When you uh, see, yeah, you know, I was like, going to say something there, but I won't. I know. And I, I think I know what you're going to say. And I'm glad you yeah. didn't. Um, and Binners, who do you think wins? Listen, when we get to the Ribbles, Dale, can you go to me first? Because um, listen, to, once again, uh, Roseman all over it. And um, he mentioned Paddy Toomey, bright, bright young trainer. Well, the Racing Post's brightest young journalist has already scooped me on Roseman. Brightest? Are you sure about that? Well, he's young. Right, right he's young. Hang on a minute. Steady on. I'm sorry, <laughs> Lee. <laughs> I've got feelings. Oh, okay, yeah, sorry. All right. um, joint, joint, joint favourite. The Ribblesdale Stakes. Yeah. Um, is a 340. Binners, you can have the um, the prices and then give us your view on the race first. Thank you. That, um, seven to four, Fleeting and Queen Power. Once again, we can't separate the two at the top of the market. Seven to one, Francolina. Ten, Shambolina. Uh, sorry, Shambolic and Starcatcher. It's 12 to one bar. Keep going, keep going. Yeah, I'm going to go. Going keep going for the prices. Uh, uh, well, we're 12 to one bar at the moment, um, David. As you see, I can't. I haven't. Oh, written, oh, hang on, hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. What, what, what's the horse you want to know about? Fresno. Okay, give us a price for Fresno. Um, I'm Unfortunately, I've only done well, no, the top of the just, market. Just pick a price. And think, uh, well, it's, think she'll be? it's definitely at least 12 to 1. It could, okay. could be a little bit bigger. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go for Francolina. Um, she ran a crackerjack in the, in the Musadora Stakes at York. Um, she was only beaten four lengths at Epsom in the Oaks. Um, as you guys know much better than me, uh, Epsom, very tricky course. Not all horses handle it. I think Francolina will be much much more suited back at Royal Ascot. Okay, and BBC's bringing back a crackerjack as well. You mentioned Cracker Jack. Fantastic. Yeah, nice. I, I enjoyed that when I was a young man. Mm. Uh, DJ? Uh, the horse I fancy is... Well, I don't... I'm going to start this off by saying something you should never say when you're doing a tipping podcast. I don't think this horse will win, but I think it'll run very well. And I hate hearing that. When I listen to tipsters and you hear them say, oh, I think it's a get-out-of-jail-free card. Mm. But I think Fresnel is overpriced here. It's 16 to 1 Paddy Paris, 25 else, 25 elsewhere. Um, if you go back to the run in the Musadora, um, I'll have another one. Kept edging across Fresnel the whole way from the two furlong pole. And, and she just never got a chance to get into her stride properly. Uh, Jack Davidson, he's only got 10 horses in training. He's only 31. And this is by far the best horse he's ever had. It's first Royal Ascot runner. And... Um, I went back through the run at Nab and was beaten two lengths by Pink Dogwood. Again, hemmed in, couldn't get out at the two furlong pole. I just think now that she steps up to a mile and a half, where she'll be allowed to stride, 
I think she's better than we've seen so far. Now, she will need to be a lot better, but I do think she will improve for the step up and trip. She'll be fine on the ground. Um, I think she's a better horse than her price gives her credit for. The most likely winner is, without a doubt, I think Fleeting, who probably was the moral winner of the Oaks, flew home, uh, is getting better, typical Aidan O'Brien filly that just keeps on progressing and progressing. And the funny thing about Fleeting is, um, Jamie Heffernan could have ridden uh, Hermosa in the 1000 guineas so he had third choice and they were asked what they want to ride and Jamie picked Fleeting and I think a few of the lads were scratching their head but we saw in the Oaks why he picked Fleeting and uh, I think I think you could see a career best from Fleeting who is priced accordingly and will probably win but at the prices I'd go for Fresno each way. Okay Tom? I'm not worried about the price Fleeting wins and I think it's just start odds mm. on. I really do. I think seven. I think if Binners is sitting there laying seven to four Queen Power and Fleeting, I think that's completely wrong. I'd have, I'd have Fleeting at evens and Queen Power any price and, you and like, really. Do you know what Lee Motter said back? Queen Power. <laughs> By Queen Power the day before Fleeting was supplemented. Oh, poor old Marty. You should have oh, waited. I know. Patience. I know. Often my, I'm often <laughs> just too gung ho. It's one of my many faults. Um, I think Fleeting is an absolutely superstar filly. I think she's sewn it twice in the Mayhill when she, when she sprinted from last to first to beat some good horses over a mile and in the Oaks. Uh, she was unlucky. I'm not sure she's better than Pink Dogwood, but she's second best filly in that race by a country mile. I think she's a superstar, and I think she's miles better than the rest, and I think she'll win. Yeah, I agree. And in all probability, that is the bit they'll cut out of this um, postcast, a Twitter promotion. Good, strong words there from Tom Siegel on fleeting the 3 4 to the Rebels L Stakes. He thinks she should be odds on, and that brings us to the end of part one. What's my horse's handicap? The fact that you're backing him. Everyone loves a newbie. That's why Paddy Power Games are giving all new customers 60 free spins on daily jackpot games. New Paddy Power Games customers only. One per customer. T's and C's apply. 18 plus. Begumbleware.org. Welcome back to this Racing Post postcast. Looking ahead to day three of Royal Ascot. Right now, there's just a, a sense that rain is starting to spit here at the Royal Meeting. Um, but I have to say as well, my future on these postcasts depends on me reminding you um, that you can access all these lovely products on YouTube, Audio Boom and Spotify and it's not just about what we think it's about what you think so do use YouTube to tell us what you feel will win these Royal Ascot races and the fourth race on day three at 420 is the signature prize of this Royal meeting it's the Gold Cup full-time winner uh, Yates is behind me gorgeous statue of Yates and the gorgeous Mr Paul Binfield is stood next to me now with the Paddy Power prices. So your future on these postcasts is not in doubt. You're argu you're easily the best presenter. Um, to say arguably. <laughs> no, I, I, yeah, arguably <laughs> yeah, easily. Um, we are odds on Stradivarius, 10 to 11, uh, 4 cross counter, 11 to 2 DXB, and it's 12, 12 to 1 flag of honour, 16 the rest. But um, Stradivarius goes out a shade of odds on, Lee. Well, in the first half, Tom Siegel said to us that Fleeting should be an odds on shot in the Ribblesdale. Tom, Stradivarius is an odds on shot in the Gold Cup. Should he be? I think Fleeting's a more likely winner than he is, but I do think he's most likely to win, funnily enough, doing a David there, saying what David said a minute ago. Uh, I wouldn't back him at 10 to 11, no, because I think this is a step up in, it's, a, it's just a brilliant race. If we'd had Kew Gardens, I think it would have been the best uh, Gold Cup I'd seen in many years. I think the three of them at the top there, you know, we've got a Derby second, we've got a Melbourne Cup winner, you know, you know, they're proper, proper good horses. They could compete at mile and a half races. It's not very often you get horses like that running in the Gold Cup. Do, do I think Stradivarius will win? I think he's the most likely winner, definitely. But I've backed cross-counter. So have I. I think he's an... I, just my worry Founding about... member him, of the fan club, I right? am. I absolutely love the horse. I thought he was brilliant in Melbourne. It's my bucket list is to go to the Melbourne. Oh, Cup. well, you my boys, friend and I... Uh, you it's, boys, it's, it's, you it's, boys have been there. Isn't it the best thing ever? Everyone oh, tells me it it's is, the best thing ever. It is, the, it is the greatest racing experience you can have anywhere. In the, you'd agree, wouldn't you? Oh, unbelievable. Best five weeks of my life. Yeah. Yeah. Spring Carnival, yeah. Don't and should anything. Racing Victoria be watching this, <laughs> David and I? What about, your, what about your wedding day, David? <laughs> yeah, it was the best four weeks and six days apart from my wedding day. Yeah. <laughs> so cross counter? Yeah, I love him. I thought he was absolutely... I thought he got one of the worst rides I've ever seen in a, to win a Melbourne Cup. I've ever, I thought he was given a mountain to climb. It had, I was getting a lot of weight. He was a three-year-old at the time. But he sprinted down some really good horses. I saw Mel Mello come out and run really well in those good races. He's a very solid horse. He, he must have given him 10 lengths start and run him down. It's impossible to. My worry about him is the ground and the combination yeah. with the trip now. Yeah. I think he's a faster horse than Stradivarius. He's definitely a faster horse than Cross uh, DXP. We saw that at Goodwood last year. Broke the track record yeah. in a mile and a half when he thrashed uh, DXP in the Gordon Stakes. The worry is whether, it, whether the combination of the two now will catch him out. And 
I'm a big fan of conditioning when it comes to staying races. You wouldn't, you know, do you know what I mean? I like the, I like horses that have been had a few runs. Now, Charlie Appleby is a brilliant trainer, and he did it with Blue Point yesterday. But I would have loved to have seen him have a run before he gets here. Of course, he won the Melbourne Cup without a run as well, didn't he? He did, but he'd been racing all through the season, hadn't yeah. he? This is a, this is off the plane from Dubai. Yeah. It's a bit of a different kettle of fish. I think he's the best horse in the race. I really do. I think Whoa. he's better than Stradivarius. Wow. Okay. I do. I think he's a superstar. Yeah. I think he could win a King George. Well, I don't think Stradivarius could, but. Gas got Gold Cup two and a half miles. I actually warming to the fact that DXB might be the danger now that now the rains come. He's a monster on soft ground. He always has been. He's been sort of getting away with fast ground, and it's just Mark Johnson. And I think he's gonna he's just gonna get rolling. And I think Stradivarius will come past him. And I think, but I'm not sure Cross Counter will now because I'm just worried about the ground for him. Okay, David Jennings. Yeah, I, I pr possibly disagree with Tom. I think Stradivarius is the best horse in the race. Um, like. He's never going to be a big price. Defending champion, unbeaten in his last five starts. Like he is the most likely winner. Ground does even it up a little bit here. And um, the one horse when I went through the race, I was I was shocked at how still how big of a price it still is as Flag of Honor. I've never been a huge fan of the horse. It's twelve to one though, and I, like I think we got drawn to the sexy stairs, like the Kew Gardens, the Capris, the Southern Francis with Aidens, when really it was staring us in the face. Last year's Irish St Ledger winner, who's been running up against Magical, finishing second to Magical over a mile and a quarter on its first three starts of the season, and I think with Flag of Honor. Obviously, the trip is a little bit of a worry, but when you go back through his form, like he's got rock solid form. He's rated 117, so he's only rated three pound inferior to Stradivarius, and I don't think we've seen the best of him yet. Ground should be fine. Um, he won his maiden at Nace on yielding ground. He was won a Group Three at Leperton on yielding ground, and he's a half brother to Air Chief Marshall, who won a maiden at Gorham Park on heavy ground by eight lengths. So I think he'll cope fine with conditions, and I just wonder. Maybe it's a last minute decision, a bit like Circus Maximus, but I just wonder has this been the plan all year for? flag of honour and yet we thought it might have been the plan for some of the others and at 12 to 1 he should finish in the first three okay uh, and Binners your gold cup winner is really as David Jennings as an Irish correspondent should know if this has been the plan all year for flag of honour but um, any, anyway anyway um, Confidence the uh, 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 yeah, Tom's made a much more eloquent case for, for, for cross counter than, than I possibly can yeah. um, there's only a pound between them in uh, ratings, and it's 10 to 11, 4 to 1. So I think cross counter is, is the value. Um, got beaten in the King George V here a, a year ago. Yeah. Yeah. Improved at a rapid yeah. rate of knots. I liked his comeback in Dubai, and I think at the price is uh, cross counter. That was quite eloquent, business. Uh, you're hard on yourself. Well, I think you're right. I know. Um, <laughs> Yeah, the five o'clock is the Britannia Stakes, basically a hunt cup for three-year-olds. And Bob Enfield, this one, a very hard race, your compilers. Yeah, very hard indeed. Um, Lee, we're very generously going six places on this uh, very easy race for punters to pick the winner of. Eight, uh, Valorum. Nine, Mutter Farwit and Beatboxer. Ten, Beat Le Bon and Dunkirk, uh, Dunkirk Harbour. King Aid, Aidimar, and it's 12 to 1 bar. You see, it's quite a hard task with some of those horses there. Sorry? So the pronounce just, yeah, the there's a couple of non runners. Just, I was just, coming, just as I was coming out, Richard Hannon's pulled both his out. So Beat Le Bon and Masaru are non runners. Okay. And always the potential for more, I guess, if we get more rain yeah, but, during the day today. There are, but the, these reserves have come in. Two reserves at the bottom, yeah. Migration and the other one, have, the one below him, are in the race. Okay. Um, do you want migration. to talk about it? Yes, I do. I am so pleased. He's, one of my, he's been one of my anti post bets for the week. I am David Benwisier's biggest groupie. I think he's absolutely, he likes Paddy Toomey, I like David Menuizi. I think he's... What do, what do we call a Menuizi groupie? Me. Okay. Call him me. Right. me. Me, I just think he's really, really good. He's, what is he, 7 out of 11 now, 7 out of 12 the last few yeah. weeks. History writer the other day. He's had so many good horses. He does brilliantly with them. They're not very well bred horses. I love migration. I think he'll love the ground. He was incredibly unlucky not to win the Isha Cup behind Masaru. He must have given him 10 late start and run him down. And no horse was finishing as well as he was the whole day. Yeah that day and then he won at Newmarket next time under 10 stone. I think he's going to like the ground and I think he's a massive player because I think he's a strong finisher and I always need that provided Jason Watson doesn't get involved in the race too soon. I think he's a big player. I love the way Monsieur Manusier wears his binoculars. He sort of, well, he puts them over his shoulder and across himself like David Gandolfo, the jumps when he used to do. I think yeah. it's quite sweet and endearing. Yeah, he's, a, he's a pretty, well, he might be sweet and endearing, but he's a blinking good trainer and that's yeah. what I like about he's him. He's been a big David Gandolfo fan, that's why. Why he's he doesn't, right. that is correct, yeah. Really? Yeah, honestly. Well, isn't that spooky? No, it's absolute rubbish. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> 
beautiful moment ruined there, but it's... <laughs> David. Was he lying there? Yeah, he was. No. I just said to him, you could never tell if Binners is telling the truth or not, and he wasn't. Mrs. Binners probably says the same thing. Yeah, she, she probably does, if she existed. <laughs> uh, King Adamar is the one I like here. Okay. Uh, Martin Mead obviously had a, a slow enough start to the season, but uh, he had a winner last week. And with King Adamar, now, it's, for a horse that was beaten to go up £6 is a lot, but I thought that race that he was beaten in at Nottingham was a proper proper race very good race. U Uzo has come out and won since now won by a length at Sandown but it was valued for much more than a length needs further was was run over seven Uzo was a well handicapped horse over a trip um, and I thought this uh, King Adamar who has missed a break the last twice and that's a worry here because he's thrown installed 16 and you don't want to be missing the break he's cheek piece on for the first time and I'd imagine your buddy Oshi Murphy's phone was hopping for rides in this race he could have rode maybe 10 of them and he's on King Adamar I think he's a good horse I think he could potentially be a three figure rated horse he's rated 93 here so uh, King Adamar for me all right bro and then that just leaves us with the King George the fifth stakes at 535 the last race on day three Paul Binfield Paddy Powers prices uh, yes Lee um, yes that's the one um, Mark Johnson, uh, no, 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 I, I, here we go um, yes yeah, that's right. Five places as well, Tom. Six, uh, nine to two Constantinople favourite, as you say. Six, Sinjarian, Sir Ron Priestley. Seven, Good Birthday. Eight, Fox Premier. And it's ten to one the race. You've written them, you've written them over the car for the Sky Sports Racing HD Novice Handicap Purple at Utopsity. For, uh, for viewers, they should have a proper look at this, right? This is what he's trying to read. So you can forgive his, yeah. his hesitancy. Yeah. Uh, well, can, I, can we have a quick look at your notes, David, please? No problem. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Uh, That's pros, we Motti. Just, we just don't, don't need notes. We, Makes, just know we wing it. <laughs> we wing it, yeah. <laughs> um, David Jennings, the King George. Yeah, I think we're, we're finishing off on what is probably potentially a good thing. Oh. Yeah. Constantinople is a seriously well handicapped animal. Um, he's running off a mark of 105. He was rated right 99 when he won at the Curra. Now, the winning distance was narrow but it could have been a lot more. Um, I did a behind the scenes piece in Ballydoyle a couple of months ago and Constantinople had ran a cork the previous day. And we're just, a couple of us were sitting around chatting to Aidan and he was very surprised that horse was beaten. Called him a group horse um, and I think he is a group horse. I think he showed the last time that he is a group horse. He potentially could have a good bit in hand here it's a good bit of placing i'd say this race has been the plan for quite a while and uh, you certainly haven't seen the best of constant constantinople yet i think what price are you at the minute pinners uh we are nine to two favorite i would say he'll go off about five to two tom siegel this well, is good isn't it yeah, I like him. I like him. I think he was back for the St. Ledger this week. I think that, there's really? some money floating around for him yeah. for the St. Ledger. He's a, I mean, they, they're really very highly regarded horse. He'll have to be. You know, he's top weight. He's giving yeah. a lot of weight to a horse of William Haggis's Sinjari, who should have won the London Gold Cup, yeah. and it shouldn't have been close. Yeah. He, got a, he got a bit of a dodgy ride there, and he got, he got chinned on the line by Hedman, who will, who's running earlier in the day, so we'll have a, have a form clue with them. He's running in the uh, Hampton Court, I think, so we'll have a, we'll have a form clue with Sinjari, but those are the two, I think. I think they're, a, they're, a, they're quite a standout above the rest. I mean, I wouldn't, as I said earlier about Aidan O'Brien's horses, he's winning all these races. It's a real struggle for English trainers to get anywhere near him. It really is at the moment. And so he's got another one down the bottom, South Pacific, who I quite like. I was very impressed with him on his debut on soft ground. It wasn't so impressive last time, but it was at Navan and he got right round the outside. And I think it's quite hard to do round there. So I'd give him a, him a shout at a big price, but I'm, I think uh, the two standout horses are Constantinople and Sinjari. Okay, big words then for Constantinople and Sinjari. And Ben, is your winner of this race is? Uh, I am going to go for Summer Moon. Mark Johnson's won the race six times. I don't think Aidan O'Brien's won it yet, um, unbelievably. Um, by the way, you didn't come to me for a Britannia selection, very, Did I not? very rudely. Mm -hmm. um, I, I can add. I, I saw David Manusi at Sandown recently when when he had a winner, and he he was asked if you've got any Royal Ascot runners, and he said, I, I don't think I have. Um, I, I don't think migration's going to get into the Britannia, but uh, and then he added, sadly. So that's a, a little bit of a bonus for him. A wee dram for me, Max McNeil, my good friend, that owns it, so I've got to go for that in the Britannia. Summer Moon ran well over an, a, an extended mile and six last time, back to a mile and a half, I think. He'll go well for Mark Johnston. Lovely, lovely, lovely. And that then is that, apart from our best bets for the Thursday card at Royal Ascot. Paul Binfield, your best bet 
is. I'm going to go for a wee dram in the hope that Max McNeil might possibly watch this postcast and invite me into uh, the Royal Enclosure for a glass of champagne. And what's your name again is? A wee dram. Or oh, actually, I'll have, a, I'll have a glass of whiskey if, if, he, if he's offering. A wee dram. Yeah, in the pretend. Oh, yes, by the clock. You just talked about that, didn't you? I did. Indeed. I must have zoned out for a second. Yeah, well, you forgot to even ask me for my tip. Yes. It's a poor show, really. Yeah, well. <laughs> David Jennings, your best bet? Uh, Roseman, 3 or 5, Royal Ascot Thursday. Lovely. And top? Uh, Got to be migration in the Britannia at 5 o'clock, but Constantinople fleeting. And loads of good things tomorrow, Motti. Yeah, and for what it's worth, I like cross counter in the Gold Cup at 4.20. This, then, was our preview of day three. When you return at some point in the future, we'll have a preview of day four. Goodbye. Here at Paddy Power, we're the home of the Money Back Special, with some incredible offers every single week. Check out the website or app today. Terms and conditions apply. 18 plus,